Emotion management for adults with Asperger's syndrome is our topic tonight. Just as a brief overview of what Stephen and I hope to cover, we're going to be talking about the link between Asperger's syndrome and emotions. There's a very strong link there. We want to go through that in more detail. Neurobiologically, the physical basis of emotions, why we have them, why they're so strong. We want to talk about how to recognise the emotion when it's happening in the body, what it feels like, being able to tune into it and recognise it, label it, because only if we recognise it can we do something about it to try and actually feel better in that moment when a very negative emotion can be coming in. We want to talk about the recovery process of having negative emotions in our lives. And by negative emotions, we're talking about depression, anxiety, stress, very strong anger, for example. We want to talk about all sorts of strategies. So we want you to leave tonight with an idea of what are some immediate strategies you could use as a strong emotion comes on board, medium-term strategies and long-term strategies. And that's really the introduction to what we'll go through tonight. I'll hand over to Stephen, who will take it from there. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you, Michelle. I'm going to start off by talking about the physical basis of emotions, but it's really important also to understand um, that there are non-physical basis, and I'll come to those in a moment. Very often people with Asperger's describe being unable to experience their own emotions. They can't describe them. They don't feel them. They quite often describe two emotions. The one is feeling flat, or the other one is having a complete meltdown. Um, when I'm working with children, we tend to talk about two emotions to begin with. The one is yuck and the other one's okay. And when I'm working with adults, we talk about upset and contentment. Um, people with Asperger's describe that other people tell them they're exhibiting emotions, but they don't actually feel different inside. And they don't know why other people are commenting on this to them. And they don't recognize changing emotions in others. So those are some of the complexities of having Asperger's that relate to the emotional realm. Some of the non-neurophysical influences, some of the um, elements of our context that affect us through our lives, firstly is our development. Um, now, there is physical development. There are also things like gender. There are the context in which we grow up. Um, uh, there's a difference between being a toddler and being a grown adult. Um, there are other non-neurophysical influences. There's culture and context. For example, many of us express or exhibit an irrational fear of snakes. Um, we, we, we live in apartment blocks where we don't see any unless we happen to go to a place where they are kept for our amusement. Um, but we think nothing of leaping in or, or walking into a aluminium container and flying at 30,000 feet. Uh, for people in a different culture, they might be far more comfortable with snakes and far less comfortable with aeroplanes. Um, these kids who I actually knew um, were terrified of aeroplanes. So a lot of what I've spoken about tonight is stress inoculation. So it's learning how to manage your emotions at the time of crisis. So when you're feeling overwhelmed, when the challenge comes and there's lots of anxiety, anger or depression, it's about being able to find that calm place inside to be able to start to breathe again and just observe the emotion, experience it. Don't deny it in your body. It's there. It's in your thoughts. It's in your mind. Label it and allow it to be. And as you allow the emotion and sit with it, using some of your strategies from your relaxed, comfortable place, imagining going on a holiday or imagine the beach, whatever it is for you, doing some breathing, focusing on the present, not what's going on in our minds, the, all the terrible imagination of everything that's gone wrong today and everything that will go wrong for the rest of the day. It's about coming back to, I'm just here in this moment experiencing this emotion. And just that, just sitting outside the emotion, gets you to your calm place. When you're in your calm place, 
logical thought is possible again and we can start to make a strategy to be able to move beyond that, beyond the crisis and the strong, strong emotion. Picking up on Michelle's last point, the time to prepare yourself for that stressful event is not when you're in it. You won't recognize it when you're in it. Unless beforehand you've thought, okay, I am going to my, my partner's Christmas party against my wishes, um, but he's really asked me to come because he wants me to go along, and I don't want to do this. But, okay, what's likely to happen? Who is likely to be there? Is there someone there with whom I can establish a conversation, grab them, hold them in one place, and stick with them the whole evening so that I don't have to circulate with other people who I don't know? What noises might there be? Are there going to be flashing lights? Um, maybe they're going to let off fire crack crackers at some point, and that's going to really upset me. Um, try and anticipate, and whilst doing that, practice your breathing. Practice your mindfulness. Practice those techniques, so that when you get into the situation, you can actually follow through on that strategy. You can then say, hang on, I'm now in that situation. This is a situation where I am getting stressed, where I'm reaching my threshold. I need to remember those other things that I've already practiced. Mm -hmm.